Uh, thanks for, uh, we have 20 minutes with Max. Uh, we, we're now uh, getting a closer look at Password Hub, what, what's happening in, in Password Hub in terms of, of functionalities, features. Uh, Max is joining us for the next 15, 20 minutes now. Uh, so yeah, uh, first of all, are you, how are you doing, Max? Fine, thanks. You? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's doing, we're doing pretty well. Um, first of all, uh, I wanted to maybe a, a few words on what is Password Hub for, uh, for people who don't know about Password Hub, what it does with Remote Desktop Manager in terms of password management, and, and what kind of capabilities are we looking at with Hub? Yes, it's a cloud-based storage for your password, your session, your credentials. It's a data source for RDM. Um, it has many companions such as Devolution Web Login, the browser extension. It has the workspace application for desktop, mobile. So it's and a we full also, environment. Desktop app as well, yes. available with Password Hub, the one I'm currently using actually. Uh, so yeah, Password Hub has been released uh, a bit more than a year. It's been a year or so, or about a year and a half, right? Since we first released. Maybe two. Maybe two years yeah. since we first released uh, Password Hub uh, alongside with uh, all the enterprise management, password management features. Uh, but I, as I mentioned uh, during the, the, the intro uh, with um, Password Hub, 90% uh, of, of the current users are actually using it with Remote Desktop Manager yeah. as a cloud-based repository for the backend. Yes. So uh, same thing, uh, we just released a new version with Password Hub. Uh, I don't know if you want to just give a quick five minute demo on uh, what's Password Hub, uh, and then we can deep dive into uh, what's new with, uh, with the Hub. Yeah, sure. Um, this is a shared vault. This is where users usually typically arrive in the system. This is a place where you save your password, your credentials, um, anything session that comes from RDM. This view is actually the same if if you go in RDM, it's a similar tree, everything is the same. Same thing in workspace, it's the same tree with the data, the layout is very similar. Um, in the browser extension, it's a little bit different. You have to sync your vault, but in the end, you have the same information same available tree. to use. So what we call the ecosystem of password management here, uh, where you can actually uh, consume and, and get to those passwords using different uh, devices, clients, and depending on where and what you're doing, right? Yes. Yeah, we want to reach as much as many platforms as possible. Yeah. The goal is is to our, our vision, and uh, I don't know if you if you well, I believe we are, agree on that. But passwords are here to stay, right? For the for for at least another ten years. Yeah. Uh, the 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 vision that we have at Devolutions is to being able to actually hide passwords the more from from end users and from uh, from even IT professionals. Uh, so. Uh, finding ways and solutions to actually consume and manage those passwords without having to get rid of any copy paste uh, or any kind of uh, having access to those uh, yeah. to those sensitive passwords. The less we see, the less we know, the better. Yeah, I believe mm -hmm. so too. So um, yeah, uh, so that's password hub with all the environment. Uh, so now, uh, what's happening in the, in hub and what uh, has been released in the, the last couple of weeks? So I wanted to show a quick uh, like some small features that may have went unnoticed. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is the search. Uh, previously, we were searching by name. So let's say I use my typical test here. Uh, we have the results across all the vaults with name only. But we now added an option to include all fields. So it's going to search in the fields itself for the connection. So it's not just only the name. So now you have a much more powerful tool uh, to be able to search uh, entries. So that's the first one that was a little bit like subtile. So now it's, it's user check checkbox and everything. Um, the second feature that we want to show is uh, actually um, I can go in like administration, the security <laughs> dashboard. Yep. This one has been revamped a lot. Uh, we even have like some details information and in the NIFS uh, article that talks about this security uh, potential issue. Yep. Uh, this is really interesting. There's a take action button that brings you where the setting is. That's very neat, actually. Yes, it is. I used it with uh, along with Jan and part of the security team here. Uh, we had discussions on the security dashboard. And I, I really like that uh, take action button where you can very quickly being redirected to the right place in the in the in the platform yeah. to actually do something about what you're seeing there, right? It's really nice. And the security teams with the NIST article, I'm pretty sure they're quite happy to. Yeah, I <laughs> know. It's not, you know, NIST is a, is a, a pretty high standard in, in the market. 
Uh, not everyone is aware of what NIST is, but mm -hmm. uh, I, we're going to talk about that a little bit later on with uh, with Martin Lemay, our, yeah. our CISO. Uh, but we pretty much, you know, uh, in terms of security, base all of our different, you know, in, in, into the applications. But even here in operations and in governance, we do a lot of uh, security improvements and uh, operations based on this, those standards. Yes. And another feature that Mark talked about already is actually uh, sub-entries that used to be called sub-connections. Mm -hmm. uh, as we can see yep. here, I have two DC folder, one Montreal, one Quebec. And actually, admin here is a folder which I change the icon to look a little bit like a credential. But here, it's really a credential um, that has sub-entries. Okay. Um, this before in Hub, the web client. Uh, you had little boxes here that said you had sub-entries, but you couldn't do much with it. You can only go in RDM and edit. Now it's, as Mark said, it's full-fledged items, uh, entries, so you can view them, you can modify them, you can add attachment. Here I have an attachment, and I have a reminder to myself to keep calm. Wow. So... That's wow, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, these entries are like full-fledged. You can yep. delete them, you can restore them. Uh, you can also have documentation, which, by the way, we have a new what you see is what you get editor. Also, uh, yeah. This is new, like I can type here, and it's already it's marked down behind, but you don't see it as a user. So you can see it more like if you go in like this. Um, so this is really new also, may I have gone, like I said, unnoticed. Um, and then to, like Mark said, parent on parent, we actually support drag and drop on the web, so you can drag and drop right on the entry, and it's going to parent Neat. and unparent the uh, website in this case oh, to the nice. credential. Um, so that's pretty much it for sub-entries and connections. And the last one I want to show is temporary access. Yeah, we have temporary access next on the this list. This one yeah. is a little bit more tricky. I have to switch account a couple of times. So yeah, yeah, just to reproduce the the, the, the use case of, yes. of uh, what, so, what is temporary access and what it does and why would you want to use temporary access? Exactly. So here um, I have a typical user which only sees the vault. He cannot do much with his data. As you can see, he can view entries, but he cannot do anything. Mm -hmm. But he still has the right to request for a temporary access. So he can request access for maybe 30 minutes or so. He can request the permissions. Uh, in this case, I'm going to assign myself contributor. You have a reminder here what the role is. So you can see what access you're actually requiring. Requesting. Yeah, requesting. Um, I'm going to write test because I have no other ideas right now. <laughs> and then you can see that the request was sent. Uh, but I think I sent it to the wrong admin, but that's OK. Um, so you can view details here of the request. You can see I've asked 30 minutes for these rights and a message here that I wrote. I can cancel the request if okay. I did an error. Uh, but if I go back to my admin. Your admin account. Yes, I'm logging in right now. So you can have access to that that, that request from the, the, the web app, the desktop app as well, but also workspace, right? Yes, I think so. On yes. the mobile device. Usually, the administrator receives an email. The one that was selected receives an email. Uh, right now, I don't have access to that email account, but I can still see, maybe I went fast here. I can still see the temporary access in the dashboard for the vault, so I can click on it and look at it and say, OK, uh, he's requesting this and that, blah, blah, blah. I think 30 minutes is not enough. Maybe you need an hour. So here's the test, too. I can deny if I want, or I can approve. <laughs> Once approved, the user, if we switch back to my user, will have the requested rights uh, for the given period of time. So now he can have access to do his uh, yes, maintenance exactly. or whatever. Just want to make sure. I think it was this one. Yes, time remaining one hour. Permissions, I have everything now. So oh. I can do whatever I requested. That's very nice. If we go back to the administrator, once again, like I said, I have sure, to no switch problem. <laughs> a couple of times. Uh, we have a report also with temporary access. Uh, I have to select the correct vault. We have, like you, you see, I did some tests before. <laughs> <laughs> we have the reports of who has for what. And on this little icon, you have the full story of what happened. So when it Everything creates, is logged, I guess. When it's approved, when it's revoked, etc. So you have all the statuses here as an example of a denied one uh, and everything. So you can also see the permissions if... For some reason, you need a reminder about that. Very neat. 
Love the look and feel. Absolutely. So this is temporary access. Good. Uh, and can we give, uh, uh, you also have improvements on the uh, security dashboard as well in password up, correct? Yeah. Uh, I've shown it already, right? Yeah, yeah, I kind of. Sorry, I messed up. No, it's all right. <laughs> um, a few words on uh, what's coming next with uh, Devolutions Gateway and, and sync provisioning with uh, with Azure. Yes, we're integrating the gateway. Uh, it's going really well. It should be released like next week at the latest. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, something that we're really proud of. Yep. Uh, it's going to enable like customers to have like this gateway set up and connecting to the entries without a VPN. It's kind of like having. The VPN without the hassles of a VPN. Yeah. So that's really an interesting aspect of it. Absolutely. Uh, and a few words on the uh, on the syncing provisioning account. That also has started. We have a few customers which are like our testers, if we may say. Thank you, guys. Uh, we're integrating. We're provisioning. So it's we found a few issues. Uh, so we're fixing them at the same time. But it's going well. Thanks. Great. We have a question from the uh, from one of the. Uh, uh, the audience password hub pulls icons from uh, for website entries from yes. web pages automatically. Can the same be implemented with RDM? If not, is there any downside? I don't know if you have the answer to that question or yeah, David. If, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, you come back, David. Yeah, David's gonna be back for an answer to, yeah. our, to the questions. See, I'm backstage. I'm not far away. Never far away. <laughs> yes, uh, I don't want to steal the show. Yes, it's something that we want to do uh, in the next version. I know that some people will be happy. We are implementing what we call uh, the MA image management. So it will be a global list of uh, image that you will have once in your your data source uh, in the hub and the devotion server as well. So it will be also possible to specify to use the five icons. So we will uh, try to uh, to have this feature i can i am I'm, I'm confident that it should be possible to have that in the next version of rdm uh, so instead of showing the the default icon we will cache the icon a default icon yeah. locally in rdm so that's something that we really want uh, to do by default for the website at least Great. I go uh, back to backstage. Yeah, don't don't move too far. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, thanks uh, thanks for for the answer, David. Uh, I don't know if there's other questions uh, on password hub uh, right now, but Max won't be far away as well in the chat. If there's any, uh, let me just check, take a look at the chat box here. Um, yeah. So I, I mean, any any final words on on, on password hub or? Uh, oh, damn. Or, or what's happening? Yeah, I have to go. Uh, do we have to go? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, we have to go. Okay. Uh, a few words on the uh, on Pam and the uh, the the, uh, the not the synchronizer, but uh, on uh, what's what's next with in terms of Pam yeah. functionalities. And, and we're uh, adding password reset for the next release. At least we're really hopeful that we will do it. Uh, we started working on it. We're gonna have. Uh, I'm not sure the term yet, but it's gonna be a service that we're gonna install on the network. Uh, it could be in Azure, it could be on your local network, and we will do password reset with that. For the first iteration or the first release, it will be um, on the Azure AD provider that we will support, and we will rotate the passwords. Um, so that's what we're working on. It's a big chunk of the next release. Nice. Thanks for joining us today, Max. Again, thanks for, for your time. Uh, we have a question while, while you uh, we switch to... Uh, to Maurice, who's going to be back with uh, Francois. But David, we have a question on how much effort is going on, uh, is going into the PowerShell module right now uh, at Devolutions, and what, what's the roadmap and what's the, the vision about PowerShell? Uh, we we have a dedicated team now yep. for the PowerShell. The, the challenge that we had uh, during the last year was to uh, merge all the different PowerShell models. It's not completely done yet. The uh, um, PowerShell um, model, model is integrated into the RDM. It's a bit of challenge to improve and keep the backward compatibility. Yeah. Um, but if you have requests, uh, we have now a specific, uh, uh, not topic or chat, I'm not sure. Tread, a tread? A tread. Yeah. No, it's not a tread, it's a, a section maybe in the, on, the, on the forum, on the just, forum? just for uh, PowerShell. And Jonathan and Maxim will be glad to answer you. So there's a lot of improvement. Uh, we have a vision uh, where PowerShell is um, a platform. So we now we um, yep. I mentioned that RDM is supported on Windows, Mac, 
uh, Linux, iOS, Android, and PowerShell as well. Mm -hmm. So I know that the, we during this webinar, we're, during this demo show, we're not talking about specifically about PowerShell, mm -hmm. but the next version will switch to PowerShell 7 to leverage the, the improvement of uh, .NET Core, especially with uh, uh, Azure uh, authentication. So um, we, we are investing a lot of time. We, we really have people dedicated to yep. this platform.